at this time I would like to uh, call to order the Hardin County Board of Education meeting and uh, if y'all would we'll stand and uh, say the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. And uh, board commitments, Don will have the board commitments for us. To improve our effectiveness, the Hardin County Schools board team commits to keep children first, listen, be prepared, be professional, demonstrate financial stewardship, represent the entire district and support district goals, and support board decisions. All right, thank you. And uh, recognitions, Mr. John Wright. Yes, sir. Tonight, uh, Mr. Chairman, we have our Stronger HCS Stronger Together Awards. Uh, and again, these are three, um, two individuals and one organization that is tremendous and big assets to our district. So if you'll pass that resolution, Mr. Chairman, uh, we'll be starting. I move that we pass the resolution. Do I hear a second? Okay, I have a motion and a second to pass the resolution. All in favor, second five is saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, Mr. Chairman, I believe our student is uh, coming in. Uh, so uh, are you ready? I don't want to put you on the spot immediately. I'll tell you what, I'll, 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 we'll do it in a second, okay, since you just got here. So uh, Mr. Anthony Ford, come on up, Mr. Ford. This is Anthony Ford. He is a Hardin County Schools bus driver. And uh, come over here, Mr. Ford, and Ms. Johnson will give you uh, your award. Mr. Johnson has also worked at Meadowview Elementary School during the summer with the custodial staff. And Mr. Ford is an all-around amazing gentleman. He recently took one of our cafeteria uh, carts, an older cart, and refurbished it. He scraped off the rust, removed it, removed the uh, rust, cleaned and the wheels, and spray painted them. Uh, it looks as good as new. And the cafeteria staff at Meadowview is obviously, um, they want to keep him. Uh, he also <laughs> accompanied a teacher on a home visit to help the parent uh, of a, a student uh, change a tire on their car. They didn't have the right tools, but Mr. Ford did. The writer of the nomination for this award says that Mr. Ford is a man of few words, but big actions, and we truly appreciate him, and so do we. Thank you, Mr. Ford. Thank you. <laughs> His family is here. Family, stand up. Yes, thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Ford. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Very good. All right. Miss Higgins, come on up here. This is Samara Higgins. I can tell she's excited to be here. <laughs> <laughs> she's an eighth grade student at Bluegrass Middle School, and she's been on the Thank AB you, honor roll for three, all three years of, while at Bluegrass. She's a member of the Beta Club and was Beta Club Vice President her sixth grade year. While at Bluegrass, Samara has been recognized as a student of the month in sixth grade and was just recently recognized for student of the month in eighth grade for the work in her community, and this is what she does. Samara founded the Kindness Club at Bluegrass last school year because she wanted all students in Bluegrass to feel welcome and to have a reason to smile. She began the Kindness Club um, with a smile campaign, creating posters and encouraging her classmates and staff to smile at one another because a smile can be turned around or can turn around someone else's day. Samara has helped her family cook and deliver food to all the staff at Bluegrass She's volunteered at Mission Hope for Kids. She's an active participant and volunteer in her church community and volunteers to assist her dad in presentations about the tragic Carrollton bus crash. Thank you, Samara. Appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> her family is here. here. Mr. Higgins is here. Yes. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. Hey, Casey, he won one of our weekly drawings, so we may need to get his uh, size and what he wants on his shirt. <laughs> All awesome. right, we've got our friends, uh, Mr. Chairman, here from the city of Elizabethtown. Mayor Gregory and uh, Miss Amy Inman are here, so if you guys will come on up. The city of Elizabethtown, Mr. Chairman, has a long tradition of providing continuous and devoted support to Hardin County Schools. The partnership between the city and the school district runs strong, and the city of Elizabethtown has never turned a blind eye to our schools, our students, our staff, or administration. Devoted to that spirit of giving, the city of Elizabethtown recently provided our students with funds from a community uh, development block grant it received. It also allowed the district to purchase 
additional technology for students to use at home. The city of Elizabethtown has also provided uh, many internet Wi-Fi hotspots in its uh, city parks and city-owned facilities for students to use uh, for virtual work. City administrators have always shared that they are a phone call and moments away, and they truly are. And Mayor Gregory truly says that, and he truly means it. So thank you, sir. We appreciate <laughs> you. If I could say one thing, John said, uh, we're just a phone call away. It's always best when you have different entities that can combine resources, and I think we do a great job of that. So what you all don't have, we do, and hopefully if we need a favor from you, we can get it as well, and I know we will. So thank you all very much for serving. I appreciate it. Jeff, thank you very much. I'd like to say thank you all. Uh, E-Town and Radcliffe, we're in the middle. Is working the closest I've ever seen them in my life, and I love it. So you all done a great job. We appreciate it. Thank you. Right. And with that, Mr. Chairman, my job is done. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Uh, focus on academics, Mr. Sutton. First of all, I'm glad to have y'all here tonight, Judge Bland, and Mr. Casey. I knew to hear the board. And uh, we work with the Instructional Service Department, obviously, as Chief Academic Officer and uh, Director of Assessment and Accountability. And obviously, last year, um, K prep testing was canceled. We didn't have an accountability system last year. We've changed commissioners. It's going to be adjusted again. But we came into this year with the same mindset that we're going to try to help each kid demonstrate one year of growth. And we're still looking at finance continuums. We're looking at individual student data. We're fluency testing. We're fast facts testing data this week. Uh, we got the ACT on March 9th for all juniors. You know, we're not stopping what we're doing. So we're still crunching data. And I just want to share some of that that we've compared from last year to this year. So pre-pandemic, during the pandemic, kind of get an idea of what we're seeing. So I'm going to turn over and let her share that real quick. Thank you all. Okay, so um, I've prepared a chart for you. Um, as you know, um, here in the district, we use MAP which is a um, adaptive test that our students take. This is probably the 17th year um, that we've used uh, the MAP test. Um, usually we give it in the fall, winter, and spring. Um, last spring we did not get to give it because of school closure. Um, so um, the fall of this current year, um, we dove right back in. Um, but the data that you have, we. Um, Ms. Morgan asked me to do a comparison of last fall um, with this fall. And so you have some numbers in front of you, and these are district numbers, not um, individualized by school. I have those available if you ever want to dig a little deeper and look at schools specifically. I'd be happy to share those. Um, but what you have in front of you um, are lots of percentages and numbers. Um, and before you really look at it I just have a few disclaimers because obviously comparing last year to this year I'm sorry <laughs> comparing last year to this year um, there's a couple of things obviously that are different um, for one um, our student numbers vary right now um, obviously we have students that are in the online learning Academy virtual um, we attempted to test those students remotely in their home um, with some success, <laughs> some, uh, you know, uh, some stumbling blocks, um, and definitely a learning experience. Um, so with that, not all students were tested this fall as they were last fall. Um, so we have that, and we did have to remove some scores for our online learning students because of help. Um, their scores were very skewed compared to last year, uh, 30 point jump because a parent or guardian help them with the test so um, we did go in and invalidate those scores um, they were pretty glaring I and mean, we definitely looked at lots of different things um, in terms of making that decision um, and then now we're finding parents call and say hey my child's uh, learning path that is attached to the map score um, is too hard well you know, so probably because they had a little bit of assistance on that test. So, um, but again, a learning curve, something that we knew was going to happen. Um, we were just trying to find some data um, for instructional purposes. And that's what MAP is the most 
valuable to our teachers is where are these students instructionally. Um, if you look at your numbers, you'll notice that second grade always has a dip, um, and that's just because of the type of test. So for kindergarten and first grade students, the test reads to them. It is an auditory test. It eventually becomes independent where they are reading it themselves. But in second grade, it transitions strictly to um, the student reading independently. And again, adaptive. If they miss so many questions, it takes them back down to basic. But then as they answer correctly, it will increase the, um, the rigor of the questions. Um, so let's look a little bit at your numbers here. Um, and Greg's going to um, jump in a little bit, kind of where we're at instructionally. Um, you know, we thought when you look at these numbers, especially over on your right-hand side at your at and above grade level, um, it doesn't look so bad <laughs> uh, for, where, for what we thought um, with such a gap in learning or um, in-person instruction. Um, but with that being said, again, remember our numbers are a little bit different um, in the fall. We know that math um, seems to be kind of our biggest area that um, we're seeing are some you know, concerns. So we're definitely talking in schools with, um, with that. And then, go ahead. Looking at your meeting expected growth percent, over there on your left hand side for math, you'll notice it's lower in almost every grade level, I think, except for uh, first grade. So 57% expected growth in first grade was very good in, in math, but when you look at 15%, 35, 25, 25, 26, and compare that just a few columns over there to the math meeting, I mean, reading expected growth, our kids perform much better in reading. I wasn't expecting that, not having books in their hands all the time, reading, but it seemed like we always say, you know, math, if you don't use it, you lose it. And I think we got away putting that pencil to the paper yeah. and problem solving when we were in the right. pandemic. And that was, a, that was a glaring set of data that just jumped out at us. You know, we've got to get back to those. And people always say, well, those foundational skills, those math facts, uh, problem solving. We, we've got to get back to that. And having kids back in the classroom is critical. So that data tells me that uh, you know, we, we, we missed some, some things there over that period of time. Right, one thing, just in reading on that, Greg, that is a nationwide uh, yeah. mm -hmm. part of all test scores in the area of math nationwide are showing mm -hmm. uh, that decrease, and uh, it just shows those younger years really do depend on that concrete Absolutely. sequential step-by-step -step that they're missing yeah. uh, with this. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you think that the math is hurting in scores due to the fact that Old folks like me, grandparents can't help kids in this common core of math. Possibly some. I think it was just a matter of fact that... Hey, Greg, they need you to talk sorry. to the mic, please. <laughs> I think it just came down to we weren't... We're trying to go through a computer screen to teach concepts to kids that are some of what need to be concrete, but they're kind of abstract to the kid because they can't make the connection without the teacher modeling for them. And sometimes they need that person sitting next to them, like you said, going... No, you know, yeah. subtract, carry the one. But when there's nobody there to redirect them or doesn't understand the concept, and the way we teach things now is not the way we taught things 30 years ago, per se. Some of the, some of the way we teach are, is a little bit different. And, uh, so, yeah, I think that that's been a factor. You know, uh, a lot of kids have stayed with grandparents through this ordeal. And we can read to them or we can read with them. But some of those problems, the way they Absolutely. come to a conclusion, I can, I can get the answer, but I don't know how they get there. Well, I spoke to three different parents, three, excuse me, three different grandparents this week that are guardians of their children, and they have more, I guess, roadblocks with the technology. Really? Yes. The technology that yes. leads to the instruction. So that's, that's a part that's been <clears throat> something we have to continue Definitely. to help provide support. All right. Yeah. Sorry, I'm bench still. No, no. no. <laughs> And, and I look at it, think of it from the perspective of your younger students, your kindergarten, your first grade. So much of it is hands-on manipulatives and trying to teach that through a computer screen while they can and the teacher can, have, it, it doesn't necessarily carry over and it may be much more difficult, I would think. And we say, and, I, and the grandparents tell me, they tell me to go back and watch the video. Go back and watch the video. <laughs> but that's why we see how valuable it is to have that teacher in class go over and sit with that child or an instructional assistant to model the process with the child there moving the pencil with them versus just saying go watch a video because if anybody that 
you know, ever struggled with any concept in school, we needed that teacher there to help us. We're showing the value in our teachers through this process. So it's, it's good to be back. It's good to be back on an AB schedule. It's going to be great to be back five days a week. Sooner than later, we hope. So. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the last thing I'll just bring your attention to is the little chart um, at the very bottom under the percentages you see here that has um, the little um, the bar graph with the blue um, and the the yellow diamond is what map the actual computer projects as that grade levels growth and if it's above the blue bar graph they didn't reach what the compute what map thought they should have reached. Um, so those are other ways of us um, being able to determine what grade levels um, we're seeing. And again, you can notice how in math, um, all those diamonds are above the blue and, and, they, and we know that, we recognize that. And um, again, on the right hand side, you'll see the reading um, as they get older. Um, again, those gaps, second grade's always gonna have that gap again, like I explained, but um, that's what you have in front of you. So, any well, any questions? This looks better than I feared. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I'm utterly shocked at the reading. I really am. I did not expect that. I, yeah. I really didn't expect that. I think we're doing better than uh, the national statistics by a good bit, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, Linda, did the map um, scores change this year? Did they re? I thought in 2020. So the, the norms, norms do change, but they they adjust it for um, okay. comparison. You okay. have to go in and mark that you're making a comparison between the two norms. So that doesn't skew okay. the. Okay, I wonder. So yeah, yeah, so this Absolutely. isn't skewed because of that. Okay. Correct. Okay. Yeah, the the reading is just amazing. Mm -hmm. I I wouldn't have expected that. This is better than I feared. I yeah. have to say this is much better than I thought. But it it does make clear that for things like, you know, holding, 99. Uh, cubes and putting in the last cube to show what what you know wh how that manipulable right. gives you the right you know and how multiplication works that's you know that's hard to do on a screen it just doesn't work the same way and we'll take another look we um, we tested in the fall and we had to have such a broad window because of that remote testing that um, we made the winter test, which we normally take about right, well, right now. Um, we made that optional for schools to use for placement, different things like that. Um, so that's optional right now. And then we'll take the spring test. And so we'll have more data, um, maybe more kids taking it, maybe you know, in the building taking it. And then, you know, I guess I would just say be prepared for different numbers when everybody's back in person because then you'll have a, f a bigger picture of what it what it's going to look so like. So we'll have a fall and spring comparison. We will. The year versus just the fall through pandemic the right. fall this year. Right. And that's what we want to see is that, that year of growth for that child. Right. And I think that'll be helpful. The construction I'm seeing out there, Thank there's going to be some good growth. It just, it just is. <laughs> Our teachers are working too hard. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. do we have this? We have it by school. Do you have I it do. by demographic group or? Um, I do not, yeah. but I mean, I could, I can do that. And that's just I'm capable of pulling it. Absolutely. Uh, I guess it's, we're hoping we don't need to. Right. To do that. So True. maybe things will get back to normal within six. Uh, normal's wrong. I know. To get better <laughs> in six months or so. Right. Yep. Okay. okay. Thank Any you very questions? much. Okay, did you want me to say something real quick about state testing? Just real quick, we really don't have anything. We, we don't have anything. Um, if anybody follows the news, yeah. um, the state is still, we're, you know, in a holding pattern as far as what the state test will look like in the spring. Usually we take the K prep in, at the end of the school year in May, and we don't, we don't know what that's going to be. Um, and the reason that is, is that comes from the federal government passed down and so they're waiting for a new secretary of education to decide if they're going to grant a waiver or not so hopefully in the next month we'll know a little bit more about what that'll look like so okay. thank, thank you, you Linda. We, uh, appreciate it you know we hear a lot of comments from people what does central office do you know and <laughs> here's typical examples of uh, what some of the people in central office does keeping numbers and seeing where we're advancing or declining or whatever. And we appreciate what y'all do. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, we have an energy 
management update and I think uh, Christy Fetch and uh, Kyle Lucas are going to present to us uh, looking for good numbers here also. All right. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Um, as you all know, behind every great business is a great partnership. And today I want to discuss that partnership that we currently have with TRAIN and what we are able to accomplish through our TRAIN building automation system and with the help with, with intelligent services to optimize what is spent on utilities for the district. With that being said, I'd like to take this time to introduce to you Ms. Christy Fetch, and who is in charge with intelligent services, and she can address further this partnership and what we've been able to accomplish through the help of intelligent services. Thank you. So some new faces, um, some old that we've met before. So I'm Christy Fetch. I'm the uh, account manager for Hardin County Schools and we work together <coughs> to reduce utility spend and um, increase the environment quality for the students, the teachers, and the faculty. Uh, so today we just wanted to give you an update. We usually do this about annually. I think we're at our 18 month mark now. but. Uh, just so that you know, um, we've been partners with TRAIN and Hardin County Schools for several, several years. Uh, but in 2017, we engaged together in intelligent services. So we're looking at real-time energy monitoring, rewind the building data actually through analytics uh, to identify where is there uh, anomalies and how do we stop emergency breakdowns from happening in equipment, mechanical equipment, and how do we just make it operate better and live longer. So I wanted to tell the board today about uh, utility rates. So why do we care about energy and why does Strain care about energy? Why does Kyle care about energy and the <laughs> facilities team? So over the course of the last decades, you've seen natural gas prices have continued to go down um, and now they've kind of leveled out. They're just hanging at the middle. Well, you, uh, the electric rates on the other hand have continued a very, very, just rigorous upward tick. And so today we just wanted to talk that about how we're saving energy and electric together. So in a typical school, the utility bill does not break down how the energy is being used. So having data is really how we figure out where we go to attack and drive results. So just briefly, this is what a typical school, the energy breakdown, both gas and electric, where it comes from. And so you might be surprised that the largest user is actually HVAC, so from the mechanical equipment. And then you have a large chunk that's lighting, so 25% lighting. Uh, so that's really where we spend our time, is how do we take down that biggest piece of the pie? Well, we use energy, and we use benchmarking tools and tools to validate the, our results. So Energy Star is the EPA's program that recognizes buildings that are in the top 25% of their peers. So if you're using the least amount of energy, you're gonna have the higher score. So you have to have a score of 75 or better to become a certified commercial building. So tonight we're here to present some of those awards to you, but wanna show that this is also a public relations tool. This is telling that you are being financial stewards, that you are taking the time and the efforts to, instead of sending money to the utility company, you're keeping it within the district. Um, it's also a teaching tool. You know, these are gonna be outward displaying plaques that can then say, why do we have this? Why do we care? We know that there's some green teams that you have in the district. So these are just some facts, but tonight we're here to tell you which ones we're um, awarding. Well, uh -huh. as you can see there, uh, Cecilia Valley and G.C. Burkett, I know, I know they're new buildings, but uh, those uh, qualified here in the 2019 school year, but got uh, 2020 recognition for that 12 month period. It's based on 12 months of data. Uh, Creekside, Meadowview, North Park, and Vine Grove are the next schools that are being certified as of right now. And we've got plaques for those as well. Um, the next Energy Star schools that we're looking at trying to certify with COVID restrictions and everything being shut down there for a while uh, with building not being occupied, it's based on building occupancy. So as long as the kids aren't in the facilities, it, we can't really project a good score. It's kind of false data. But the next schools that were on the brink at the time being as the other schools would be Ronnieville, North Harden, and Bluegrass. And of course, we'll be working towards more after that, uh, Heartland and hopefully the new Lincoln Trail, new East Harden. A few, before we move on, a few of the criteria 
Um, you mentioned occupancy, but it also measures like outdoor air, making sure that you're getting the proper ventilation as well as energy reduction. So it really is about how is the school operating as a whole, not just from, you know, it'd be really easy to say, let's just cut out all the lights and turn off the air, but that's not what we want to do. We want to make sure it's an optimal learning facility as well as an efficient facility. And we want to recognize EC3. So EC3, we're presenting the Reducing the Energy Intensity of the World Award. And the reason why they're not getting Energy Star is the Energy Star does not have enough data in like buildings to be able to certify this. So we do want to recognize their efforts uh, for the energy reduction that they've achieved so far. So our program Obviously, we want to make healthy facilities, but we also want to drive savings. So over the course of from 2017 to present, you'll see this is based on the fiscal year. We started the program together just at John Harden and at Central Harden. So and as the years have gone on, we've continued to add additional facilities. What you'll see is the savings achieved. That's gas and electric, and that's right out of the utility bills. So we could go we validate it in the data from the energy meters, but we also validate it from the utility bills. Uh, you'll see that we do include the intelligence services cost because it is a program. There is a fee to that, so we deduct that so you actually see the net savings. You'll see for 2020 and 2021, so we're um, that year, we denoted that there is April and May have been pulled out, and that was because of COVID, and we'll show you next where that is but so we're already for through october we were sitting at over sixty five thousand dollars in raw savings and if you want to go to the next slide and the total savings for the four-year period was what again One hundred and eighty thousand seven hundred and forty nine. Well, it seems like that's been worth it so mm -hmm. i think so I think yeah. that's <laughs> so this is just a breakdown of for the months of april and may of 2020 these numbers, these are significant savings numbers. And this is really attributed to the partnership and to Kyle and the facilities team working diligently to take advantage of unoccupied buildings. So they were able to go in and make schedule changes and make sure that everything was running as efficient or as reduced as it possibly could. And so the numbers really show for that. And as we last spoke at our last uh, meeting, um, we discussed some optimizations and some investments that we would like to accomplish within the district. And I'm glad to say we were able to complete all those projects that we previously talked about uh, with some help, programming help from TRAIN. Um, if you look at the first bulletin there, uh, we were able to add those controls to the pump packages at John Harden and you know, able to cut down the run time of those pumps whenever the building wasn't occupied just kind of wasted energy there. That shows a projected yearly savings of $10,654. Uh, and in that regard, we went through the whole district's building automation system and checked all the pump, pump packaging programming. And we have a projected yearly savings there of 11925 um, And we also would, would like to utilize some of the existing controls that we already had in the building and so by doing that, we were able to break out some scheduling things that conflicts that we had with the commons area at Central Harden and the ninth grade wing um, to where we wasn't running HVAC equipment throughout the whole building just for, you know, two or three classrooms in the admin area. And that shows a projected savings of 2300 there. Um, we also used the existing controls to uh, schedule the parking lot lights at Creekside uh, College View campus and Rineville Elementary. Um, that was more of a, it had controls on it, but it was a time clock issue. And you know, sometimes if time clocks aren't managed properly, they're on when they're not supposed to be. So you don't see as much savings there, but uh, around $500 there. Used the existing controls to schedule Ronnieville's hot water heaters and circulating pumps. I projected yearly savings of $3,400. Um, and then the investments that were, we put in a little more money to get back, you know, annually. Uh, we upgraded all the LED lighting at the Woodland and Elementary and Creekside Elementary's cafeteria. Uh, projected year savings there of 1950, and we updated the parking lot light at Heartland Elementary. Switched over to LED there, and put new controls on uh, North Middle's parking lot lights. And you see a projected yearly savings of 2,500 there. And also at uh, West Harden Middle School, we were able to add Wi-Fi thermostats and to schedule those units on and off 
got a projected yearly savings of 1925. Altogether, roughly was about thirty-five thousand uh, dollars annually that we should see, you know, savings from. And here, here right here, intelligent services. What's next? Um, really, with re uh, rising demand charges and the design of particular facilities in the district, um, I would possibly look at maybe expanding IS to James T. Alton for the high demand charges there, New Highland Elementary, and Lakewood, and. Possibly, uh, since the new schools already have the smart metering like we were talking about, managing the building through the energy use live, live data could really help us there at the new schools as well. Yeah, so a building could be, whether it's um, 40 years old or brand new, it's all about how it's operating, right? So, and what we do to, to make these investments or um, make the changes that are needed to achieve these energy star. This is just, I don't want to miss the fact that this is a huge achievement for the district, for the facilities team, for Kyle, because it's not, um, it's not every day. This isn't something that we say, oh, wow, that's great, let's move on, but it should be very celebrated by the district because it shows the investment. Um, and we want to continue. We want to keep leveraging the investments that you've made and sustain those savings. And this is actually, uh, it has to be recertified every year. So this is not a lifetime. So that means we have to keep operating the buildings efficiently and recertify them with a professional engineer annually. Yeah, and, and like we discussed, these are 2020 uh, awards here that we've got sitting out today. Mm -hmm. uh, in conclusion, uh, with this continued partnership with TRAIN and the possible expansion of intelligence services, I have great confidence that we'll be able to continue and accomplish the goals that we've discussed today. Does anybody have any questions? Any questions? Uh, I guess the only question I would have was, you know, we talk about April and May of 20. Uh, some of those costs could be uh, maybe lower because of not using those buildings exactly with full capacity mm -hmm. like we would have should school have been there, I guess. But exactly. That, that still, it's a savings. I'm not taking that away from it at all. I just feel like that sort of like our kids' numbers here, we, we're a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. don't know exactly where those numbers are because we haven't had them in school and those numbers haven't been tested from exactly. doors and windows. And that's why we wanted to pull them out to make it very transparent mm -hmm. and fair that right. we're not claiming false yeah. savings for one. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but I will, I will um, add that it did take work for them to, for right. the facilities team and for Kyle and for train together to cut back on schedules, um, break areas out so that there, it wasn't active. Um, portion of setting those back. Right, so. work was have to be done to, to accomplish that. Yeah. There's uh, just a lot of steps that have been taken. I mean, you know, like today you know, in Red Cliff, right, when we were down there for our tour and lunch today, restroom lights, you know, you walk in, it's dark in there. There's a light comes on and not too long after you leave, it's mm -hmm. off. So all that's, it's savings. We used to turn the lights on, never turn them off. Didn't mm -hmm. think nothing about it. But, Absolutely. Uh, that's, uh, well, there come a point where we just stop seeing the savings. I would say that there, you know, you're going to plateau somewhere, right. and so that's really why, like, um, in 2017 to 18, we focused just on John Harden and Central Harden, and then we just we did kind of hit a plateau. So we're still watching those, but then we chose to keep adding other schools to the okay. program so that we could just keep driving more savings. While you still don't want to turn a blind eye to those schools because. When you do that, they start to creep up in their energy mm -hmm. usage and the savings is diminished. So we want to keep watching those, but turn our major focus of driving efforts at other buildings. All right. Okay. Well, thank, thank you, you all. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. That's great. We had uh, recognition of visitors, and I don't think anyone's yeah. on there. Uh, one thing I passed over here, I probably should have put in earlier, but. Uh, Hardin County Schools uh, lost a student last weekend, and uh, I'd like for all of you to join uh, me in a moment of silence. Uh, we lost a seventh grade student, Kayla Liggins, and uh, we uh, hate to have any accident or anything take one of our students. So for a moment of silence, please. Thank you. 
and uh, construction updates uh, we had the architect and the construction manager there today at the noon meeting in the Lincoln Trail is open the kids are excited and uh, <laughs> they're in the final stages I think of the punch list uh, we were told uh, not too many uh, we Amazing. John pushed hard not to have a punch list when school started, and I think that's that's, that's been really worked well for us. Uh, nice school, it's, it it's pretty. Uh, I really like it. Uh, had nothing but positive comments on it. The people are proud of it. Uh, a few tears shed out there because the old school wasn't open. They've been a few uh, photos on Facebook and <laughs> sad memories and all oh, yeah. the things, but uh, I think they're letting the good override the old out there so are the new and uh, they say uh, East Harden is progressing uh, well finally uh, all of the roof is on now so they can work whatever weather we have they can continue to get some work done parking lots and some things like that are going to be pushed way into the spring but uh, they are making progress so we'll look forward to that and uh, that brings us down to uh, consideration of the consent of the end. John, is you going? Is there anything else you need to say? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that brings us down to the consideration of the consent agenda. Uh, pretty much, uh, like most of them here, uh, financial reports, orders of the treasurer. Uh, the fund balance from the activity fund, and uh, we are got the approval of the draft budget. We talked about a little bit today at the noon meeting. Uh, draft budget don't mean a whole lot this year because we don't know exactly where we're at or where we're going to be. Uh, it's sort of a shot in the dark. Uh, John and Jessica and the team have worked hard on it, but things could change when we find out what kind of monies we're going to receive from state and uh, hopefully uh, there's going to be a few more dollars come to cover some of these associated costs we've had this year. So, uh, we had the, uh, we're approving the 2019-2020 audit report. Uh, Brian Woosley uh, gave us good remarks on uh, the uh, audit report this year and uh, I did not write down how many schools we had. Nineteen. Nineteen schools mm -hmm. with no uh, issues at all on the audit. So that is amazing. Excellent. Never, never excellent. had that. Yes. That's amazing. Yeah. We definitely need to congratulate uh, the office managers and bookkeepers of those schools because that takes uh, a lot of hard work, determination, and sometimes um, keeping up on teachers when they have checks in the classrooms to make sure those get turned in and just making sure they do their uh, daily diligence. So they have uh, been phenomenal with that. Also believe a huge contribution to that is the finance department provides assistance to our schools with new secretaries and bookkeepers. And I think that training from month to month instead of doing it all at once they do it slowly and offer that support and actually provide a mentor for our new folks and that has made a huge difference in that area okay uh, we're going to approve a uh, central harden high school waiver which is uh, <coughs> hall sizes uh, kde comes up with new recommendations uh, we're going to do a uh, uh, major renovation that's central and a hallway is going to be a foot or two narrower than what they recommend but the building's there and we don't want to tear down a complete building for to add a foot into a hallway so uh, that's a small waiver that we're going to approve we got uh, construction documents bg2 and 3 for central harden uh, we're, we're getting well into the start of this project uh, we're rejecting a GO well bid that was taken there for the school. Uh, we were advised by the architect and the construction managers that prices might have been a little pricey. It, it was 
separate it out into its own package and we're going to put it back into a uh, mechanical package so uh, they feel like we'll get better bids on it. Uh, timing was also an issue for some of the contractors so we didn't get a sizable number of bids. And we're approving the school-wide fundraisers, uh, human resource personnel actions, and we received the minutes. We, uh, of course, participated in the draw of uh, E-Town Independent Schools. Those contracts are being finalized. And that's about it. Uh, anyone have any questions or anything they want to ask or on the consent agenda? We're open for comments or questions, either one. I move that we approve the consent agenda. Okay. I have a motion. Do I hear a second? Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. Any other comments? If not, all in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And we're down to action items. And uh, looks like uh, I think my turn might be up here. So uh, election of a 2021 board chair, uh, election of a vice chair, and uh, Affirmation of a 2021 Board Secretary Treasurer. We have uh, election of a District Finance Corporation Chair and Treasurer, Secretary Treasurer. And, uh, and then we're going to approve the board meeting dates and uh, approval of a COVID-19 emergency leave, which we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get there. All right, so. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to say a couple things. Um, it seems we need a motion to actually hold the election, and uh, I'd like to cover a couple of those. So I move that we hold the election for the chair and the vice chair and further nominate Charlie Wise to serve as the chair and Don Johnson to serve as the vice chair again. I'll set the motion. <laughs> if you'd be willing. Chance, is this maybe a railroad process? <laughs> I think it is, yes. Uh, Look at all that business gets wrapped into one. Yeah, I know you just put it all in the same one, didn't you? Uh -huh. <laughs> we, can bundle, we can unbundle if you like. <laughs> Any other nominations? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, uh, I'm willing to serve again. I appreciate your all's uh, confidence, and uh, uh, but I uh, would be more than glad to uh, be out there in any other chair. I'm gonna be honest with you. I, it's uh, this has been a very challenging year. <laughs> Uh, it's not been the most fun year we've had, I'm telling it, you. It, it Terry has, has worked uh, extremely hard. Uh, uh, a lot of uh, calls and contact, uh, but we'll, uh, I guess we go back to every one of the political things we're going to get through this. So, yes, we will. Uh, yes, we will. Yeah. Get to the other side. Any other nominations? I need a second. You got it. Oh. All right. Okay. Yeah. You yeah. Yeah. We have right. a second over. All right. So we. All right. All right. Well, all in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. I guess that motion carries. So. Thanks a lot, Ben. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Couldn't happen to a nicer guy. <laughs> <laughs> well. Thank you, folks. All right. We appreciate uh, it. Now we need to. Uh, we've got the election of the 2021 board secretary and treasurer and also the uh, district finance corporation. So we probably will need a separate motion on each one of those. Yes, yeah. sir. And uh, 
I move that we affirm Terry Morgan as the 2021 Board Secretary Treasurer. Second. Second. Third that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. So you uh, got you another task there again. <laughs> it uh, goes right along with the normal yes. work, don't it? Have lots of people out there helping mm -hmm. with that one. All right, and we need to uh, approve the uh, 2021 District Finance Corporation Chair and Secretary Treasurer. So uh, we need a motion for the District Finance Corporation Chair and the Secretary Treasurer. We can put that one together. All right, I let's see. That's I can read. I move to reaffirm the Hardin County School Board Chair Charlie Wise as the chair and Superintendent T Teresa Morgan as the Secretary Treasurer for the Hardin County School District Finance Corporation. A second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any other uh, motions there? Nominations? If not, voting on the motion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. So I guess that one puts us where if the schools goes under, then we go with them, right? Yep, that's Absolutely. what that means. Absolutely. Well, we're, uh, we're riding on John's back. He's going with us. That's all I can say. <laughs> yeah. We always ask John if there's any money for this project, and he uh, he's done a good job with us so we'll battle through that one <laughs> all right approval of the remaining 21 school board year meeting dates times and locations and uh, I, I'm assuming that we're going to select the locations of the noon meeting at a different time than tonight it's it's on. It's, on it's, in, it's in. It's already in there. Okay. It's yes, in the recommendation. They've already been picked. Okay. Yes. All right. That's good. So uh, we uh, discussed this some today at noon, and uh, I've been here uh, 14 years, and it's been on a third Thursday. Uh, we talked about doing maybe the second Thursday for the noon meeting, and uh, we had some different thoughts and whatever because that would create a almost a three-week out end of items to be put on the agenda because normally the agenda items are presented at least two weeks prior to the board meeting, and we get them a, a full week before the board meeting so I think in order to keep it somewhat simplified we're going to we thought at the meeting today we would stay we didn't take any action and it can go however y'all choose but uh, we thought we might stay with the board dates as they are <coughs> and have been and uh, that would be still keeping it on the third Thursday and and uh, the noon meeting at one of the schools uh, Noon meetings are important uh, due to the fact we get to visit school. Uh, that takes us through about 12 different facilities a year that sometimes uh, it takes two years to make a cycle. We've got about 25 or six facilities out here, so it, uh, it really helps you to see what, you know, what's there and the shape they're in and how good the principals and teachers and everyone is is doing it it just it's it's very important I think now to do that so if it's everybody desire we we got new board members and, and you all feel free to chime in but we 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 really enjoy or would like to see the schools and it, it helps us in our decisions down the road so that being said uh, Anyone want to change or we need a motion to leave them like they are, I guess. I 
would, I recommend that the board set two regular monthly meetings for the remainder of the 2020 at this meeting. The meetings will begin at 11.30 a.m. and 6 o'clock p.m. on the dates and the locations that are listed on the sheet here. All right. Thank you. Do I hear a second? Second. I have a motion and a second to uh, approve the dates as the third Thursday like we have been uh, with the dates and times acceptable here. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, uh, we're also, uh, uh, action item F is approval of a paid COVID-19 emergency leave due to absences related to the employment with the district. And uh, Ms. Moore, you want to explain that a little bit more? We yeah, talked we about can. it and yes. <clears throat> felt and like this needs to be done. Absolutely. In De uh, December 31st, 2020, the CARES Act uh, ended, which would uh, give an employee 10 COVID sick days um, if they had either become quarantined because of COVID or they were a case of COVID. And so we feel um, one of the things we want to do is to make sure we are supporting our employees and what the decision paper says is through no fault of their own, meaning they were following the proper protocols and all that, which our teachers have been phenomenal uh, to all the hard work, our custodians coming in, cleaning, spraying door handles. But there are still times that a teacher or a classified assistant may be placed on quarantine because of being a, a direct contact to COVID. And we have a very uh, thorough um, tr contact tracing process. All of our teachers send in seating charts. Our buses have seating charts. Our cafeteria have seating charts. Uh, so we feel like that process does a great job of identifying those people who become contacts or cases. And I feel it's important for us to show our uh, entire staff that we value them and we do not want them to have to take their personal sick days. So what this would do would be to allow for them to use 10 COVID days and uh, they would not have to use their sick days for that. And uh, it does say that it's um, as being part of the Hardin County Schools. Uh, so some folks um, over winter break had um, had visited with family and they said it was not school related. So those folks would continue to use their sick days as needed. We also have staff that um, can work from home and if they are able to do that, we still have teachers doing remote learning or virtual learning and we have allowed that and then we have someone in the classroom with the students while they're teaching virtually. Um, if a group of students are at home, then that teacher does what we would normally call NTI on those days when the, maybe the students couldn't be there on those days as well. So I just feel uh, it's important for us to provide our teachers this backup plan uh, for those COVID days. Yeah, I feel like this is more than fair. Uh, you know, it, it is, if, if it's transferred within the school, it's job related. There's, there's no way that we can deny that. And I think this is fair for the teachers or staff that's there. And uh, they, they are working hard. I'm telling you what, I, we left Redcliffe today after the students were dismissed. And when I walked by the office, people in there were wiping everything down. That's just, you know, it's another duty that those people don't deserve. So they are working extremely hard to keep these children safe. And I think this, I really think that our children are safer in the school environment when you go in and you watch them and how well those little ones have adapted to the instructions. They're probably doing a better job than us old folks. Oh yeah, they, I think they that's are. true. Great. Yeah. And, uh, they have been remarkable, yes. quite resilient. Yes. All right, so uh, I need a motion to approve that uh, item, action item F. Well, how about so moved? Okay. Got here a second. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you.
new business and the superintendent's report. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, first off, I want to welcome Mr. Bland and Mr. Casey as our new board members from the division. Uh, greatly appreciate their willingness to serve in this capacity. I will tell you it is an incredibly important job. Uh, I don't believe there's a more important job in the district than uh, making sure the system of education is strong and I certainly feel we have that here in Hardin County because of the dedication of our board uh, to our staff and to our students. Uh, this also happens to be Board Appreciation Month and I'm sure you all have seen some of the postings online but uh, I just want to say how much I appreciate and I know at the beginning of each meeting we have these board commitments read but what I can tell you is not only are those board commitments read, but they are lived out each and every day. Uh, when we take a vote, it is for the betterment of the entire district and it is for the betterment of our students in Hardin County. And I don't think there's, um, a, some districts go back and revise their board commitments, but when I look at the board commitments and how this board and our prior two board members live this out each and every day, I hope the community realizes the uh, hard work and dedication. We spent three hours at a meeting this afternoon and they take endless phone calls and emails for the new ones. You'll get endless emails and phone calls, uh, but you also be able to visit those schools to reap the rewards of all of your hard work and dedication like we had the opportunity today. So we do have uh, some gifts for our board and this again is uh, a homemade gift and this was uh, made by our culinary art students at oh, EC3. Oh, geez. So there are a variety of sweet treats inside the oh, box uh, that we I mean. truly believe oh, yeah. you will thoroughly enjoy. I know uh, Miss Lowe um, with her students and also uh, Mr. Ramsey, they worked really hard, but the students are the ones who created these uh, for you. And we just want to say thank you for uh, your hard work and dedication. There's some pictures of the students who made your box uh, in, in your box. That's oh, fantastic. That's thank, thank you. you. So, There's some pretty, pretty phenomenal work over there. They're, oh, they're yes. really doing yes. some good stuff. So. It is. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, so I think uh, not only will they taste good, but they're also beautiful. So. <laughs> We worry about that, but sincerely, we do uh, appreciate our board. We'll have John to get a picture tonight of everyone so that we can post it so that uh, people know the folks behind the scenes making the decisions for the interest of our uh, students in Hardin County. So sincerely, thank you. And that is it. Now we're going to have punch and cupcakes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That, uh, thank you. And... Uh, we don't need to have a uh, executive session no, tonight. Sir. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> February the 15th is President's Day. Uh, school will be dismissed. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm hearing uh, that uh, Group A gets, or Group B gets cheated out of all of the uh, Mondays off. But uh, <laughs> Terry advised us today that they're going to do, uh, make some of those go on Wednesday. So, yes, uh, yes. Uh, they're going to get their payback. So anyway. Uh, we, yeah. we have counted the days um, so that we realize they are receiving equal, equal number of days, equal number of days off. So it's all, it's all fair. <laughs> all right. In February the 18th, uh, and be shortly after Valentine's Day, we'll be back here again. Yes. So, it was always I know. Uh, John yeah. Emery, you know, we had to do the <laughs> motion to adjourn, Charlie. You won. <laughs> the motion is second to adjourn. All in favor, second five is saying aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion or meeting adjourned. <laughs>